They were married. The wedding march peeled out. The pigeons fluttered. Certainly he looked handsome, and she looked shy. It was on Tuesday. Now it was Saturday. Rosalind still had to get used to the fact that she was Mrs. Ernest Thorburn. But here he was. She glanced at him sideways. Well, when he was eating toast, he looked like a rabbit. Not that anyone else would have seen a likeness to a creature so diminutive and timid in this spruce, muscular young man, with a straight nose, the blue eyes, and the very firm mouth. That made it all the more amusing. His nose twitched very slightly when he ate. And then she had to explain, when he caught her looking at him, why she laughed. It's because you look like a rabbit, Ernest, she said. And since it amused her to see him twitch his nose, he had never known that his nose twitched, he twitched on purpose. Yet she laughed and laughed. And how long does such happiness last, they asked themselves. Lap him, she exclaimed suddenly, and gave a little cry as if she had found the very word she looked for. Lapin, Lapin, King Lapin, she repeated. It seemed to suit him exactly. He was not earnest, he was King Lapin. Why, she did not know. She let her fancy play with the story of the Lapin tribe. There were the black rabbits and the red. There were the enemy rabbits and the friendly. There were the wood in which they lived, and the outlying prairies and the swamp. Above all, there was King Lapin. Ah, Lapinova, Rosalind murmured. Is that what she is called, said Ernest, the real Rosalind? He was King Lapin, she was Queen Lapinova. They were the opposite of each other. He was bold and determined, she wary and undependable. Thus, when they came back from their honeymoon, they possessed a private world, inhabited, save for the one white hair, entirely by rabbits. When Aunt Mary said that she could never bear to see a hair in the dish, it so looked like a baby. For instance, there was a golden wedding party, when all the Thorburns assembled at Porchester Terrace to celebrate the 50th anniversary of that union, which had been so blessed, had it not produced Ernest Thorburn, and so fruitful, had it not produced nine other sons and daughters into the bargain, many themselves married, and also fruitful. And as she profited, she saw in front of her the stubby black handwriting in which her mother-in-law, when they were engaged, had expressed the hope that my son will make you happy. No, she was not happy, not at all happy. She looked at Ernest straight as a ramrod with a nose like all the noses in the family portraits, a nose that never twitched at all. There was a sudden silence. They all stood with their glasses raised. They all drank. Then it was over. Thus time passed. One year, two years of time. And Rosalind was sitting over the fire, sewing. What do you think happened to me today? I was crossing the stream when... What stream? Ernest interrupted her. The stream at the bottom where our wood meets the black wood, she explained. Ernest looked completely blank for a moment. What the deuce are you talking about? he asked. My dear Ernest, she cried in dismay. King Lapin, she added, but his nose did not twitch. In the middle of the night she woke feeling as if something strange had happened to her. She was stiff and cold. Lapin? King Lapin? She whispered. He asked, What's the matter? I thought my rabbit was dead, she whimpered. Ernest was angry. They talk such rubbish, Rosalind, he said. Lie down and go to sleep. She lay curled up on her side of the bed, like a hare in his form. Next day, she could settle to nothing. She seemed to have lost something. She felt as if her body had shrunk. She went home and sat over the fire without a light, and tried to imagine that she was out alone on a moor, and sat crouched in her chair, with her hands dangling empty, and her eyes glazed like glass eyes in the firelight. Then there was the crack of a gun. Oh, Ernest! Ernest! she cried, starting up in her chair. It's slapping over. She's gone, Ernest. I've lost her. For ten seconds he stood there, silent. Yes, he said at length. Poor Lapinova. Caught in a trap, he said. Killed. So that was the end of that marriage. <laughs>